Hello everyone, Lord Adrian here, another Grey Goo replay. Spawn on the top left side, we have Trash Loser, and spawn on the right side as the beta player, we have created Pomegranate. Probably should mention this Trash Loser is the human player also. Either way, it looks like going to have a bit of a harassment force. Two, two commandos, one stalker, only one trident here. The trident can grab a commando, but it looks like he's just going to run away. I say that's a good option trying to gather us up. Just trying to stall, gather up as many units as possible just to deal with this harassment force. Listen, he can get the harvesters for the collectors. And he is setting up a wall segment. A wall segment will create a pretty good uh, platform here for him just to well, stay here. Giving a uh, commando plus 1000 health is not a half bad commando. They're pretty cheap in these wall segments. I think they cost. I actually don't know the exact cost, but those get the other next collector, which is very good because if you were to get on the way out, it could explode and kill its own units, which is not very good. Looks like you do have another trident coming up that should be enough to take, just to remove one of these guys. Perhaps both the stalker and the commando, but they'll not be able to remove this commando on top of the wall segment due to the large fact they he just has way too much health now. Gotta be careful taking out these collectors filled with catalysts because they could explode. You can see there's a bit of an explosion animation. I think that does 100 damage. It is a lot of damage. Able to blow up drovers and tridents and revolvers. Yeah, so just always be careful though exploding harvesters. But seeing there's only one commander left, it, he can't really do much now. He's just going to whittle away this extractor. He's going to, of course, use the repair tool on it, which. I see. Never mind. I have seen the damage still going down, but it looks. But apparently, huh? Look at that. It's repairing at the exact same rate that the commander was doing damage. It does have buildings. Well, of course, it's not repairing now. Ah, uh, never mind. I sort of lost my train of thought right there. But either way, there is a quite a healthy number of tridents here. Which more than deal with these four commandos. Not only they they can beat them one on one. There's a larger number of them there. Let's see two factories, another refinery here. Looks like three refineries versus three refineries, so nothing too extraordinary or out of the ordinary. Sending up counter wire. Perhaps he's going to set up uh, some anti-heavy sentinels here to protect this uh, harvesting location and of course set up a refinery he does have actually even building the refinery oh wait no the wire was still building so never mind I was going to say he had a uh, still quite healthy income while building a refinery which is sort of a that means it would suggest that he wasn't actually building anything for quite a bit of time but now these all these tridents will focus on the swallow segment and remove this commando from their presence these commandos now moving in, hitting this uh, building up extractor. The, the extractor, of course, is going to take a severe amount of damage because it is building. But of course, it has a pretty health, fast health, like oh, health building growth, health regeneration rate because it's well building. So it actually takes quite a bit of time for them to take that out. More commandos. That's the option, and in fact, a full wall segment here. Pretty interesting. Now the sheriff is actually reaches the this side of the wall, but we'll have to see once the human player starts attacking. Which is sort of interesting. He did he placed a wall segment here, and not right here. Right here is a bit more risky, but it will allow him to secure all this catalyst here. He can always go for the southern catalyst points. As you can see here, there's a nice rich 13 catalyst here, and you got a plain old 10 here. These wall segments are being hit, and walls do take, I think, times 5 damage when building. So he's actually doing quite a bit of damage to these walls. This wall, he, these walls are set up. He's going to garrison as many commandos as possible on these garrison points. If the walls get destroyed when the commandos on top of it, it'll just drop the commando. It won't hurt him whatsoever. So it never hurts to put them on top of wall segments in middle of engagement. Assuming he can get up there because he can still be uh, shot at and destroyed in mid jump. I should probably mention that also. 
do got a couple hangers out. Looks like we're going to see some Nimbus bombers. Probably a good choice due to the fact that there's a large number of uh, tridents here. They are pretty healthy, but the Nimbus bombers has a three bomb salvo, each one doing 50 damage. So one bomber can take out a trident or a group of tridents, in fact. Kamaz is going to try to get the bush advantage. No, they're actually going to just straight up retreat. Nothing, no upgrades just yet. Slowing down, both sides trying to eco up. Do note there's a, we've got a couple more refineries for both sides, though the human player does have one additional refinery. So the human player does have a slight better economy, and actually the beta player really needs that additional economy at this moment, unless he's building a refinery to go along here, because he is, is at minus 17 credits per second. Oh, he's building a large factory, that's probably why he's has such a poor income at this moment. Of course, bombers are quite expensive also. The human player is actually needs to spend more. Plus 16 is actually worse than minus 17 in my opinion. You have so much economy building up, you're not spending enough, you're not building enough. Both sides' economies are stabilized. Zero is the perfect economy for the most part. It's still nice to have a bit of cash reserve float up in case you need to spend even more at, the, at a moment noticed. Two Nimbus bombers are here. Do have uh, rep repair subroutines for repairs over time for the ground units. Looks like we might see a flanking force. Yeah, there is going to be a flanking force, as including an airstrike. The bombers are probably going to target these uh, this location here, doing severe amount of damage to these tridents. A couple more bombs coming down. Actually, not doing as much, not getting as good splash damage hits there. Dude, they've got the flanking force hitting the reinforcement force, which basically makes a whole separate engagement. The, he, it looks like these stalkers will win out. These bombers are out of ammo. Looks like they might have force fired the ground to the trees. Do got uh, a couple? No, those aren't bombers. I would imagine the next set of bombers would be out, but it looks like they're actually just about ready to come out now. Do got a force coming here, perhaps the eye harassing this location, but there are three anti-heavy sentinels, which they are pretty good at the, their job. Does snag, it looks like two commandos, three commandos. Oh, there's a conduit wire here. And you can see some of the graphical glitches. I didn't really mention this one, but these ones I was not aware about. Heavy bombers are coming in, perhaps going to eye to hit this location. They will not be able to, uh, I don't think the bombers have any weapon penetration. I know once they have incendiary bombs, they have 10 full, oh, actually they do have full weapon penetration. So those, these two Nimbus can destroy this, uh, conduit wire section area. They can probably splash down three, maybe four conduit wire. Perhaps you force fire the ground in between the four. He might be able to hit all, hit get a group of four. But it looks like the bomb is going to eye this location. The extractor is almost down, so he's probably going to. Oh no, he's going to spawn the units. Does get a quite a bit of Gladys there, Glad Eye. I've never been able Gladys. Yeah, I think it's Gladys. I always wonder, worry too much how to pronounce stuff. Couple more Nimbus bombers here. Looks like they're, he has spotted some AA there. He probably should research the air tech for repair repair pads. Repair pads would be pretty nice. Couple daggers here. Oh, those wall segments here. Interesting idea, but it can be quite effective. The leftover units here are almost fully repaired from the repair subroutines. Nepal is now going to start to engage them. 
of course, he has a larger force and they get cleaned up quite easily. So you're going to start harassing this... Oh, a wall. Or a gate, I should say. We do have some sites. Looks like we have some interceptors. Probably to I to take out those bombers instead of researching uh, longbows. Because longbows and cloud bursts to shoot ground targets is still not very good versus ground. Even though it's better than not able to shoot. And it looks like there are some invisible units here. I can't tell you how many... Perhaps maybe if I switch views. Yeah, so the graphical glitches are happening quite often in this game. Got a massive wave of bombers coming out. Looks like all eight are out. Yes, be careful not to get splashed down by the scythes because they do have splash damage. As the heavy bombers are going to come in, what are they going to eye? Perhaps these refineries. He does have enough bombs to take out the refineries. Do got intercepting sides. The sides are going to do massive splash damage. Look at all that splash damage. Taking out all, almost all the bombers. Five, six, seven. The eighth bomber is still alive, but that's going to be down. He lost all eight bombers because he didn't split them up. He saw the sides earlier. Maybe wasn't paying attention. But those scythes are very effective interceptors. And that's actually a pretty big loss. If I... Like, bombers are very expensive. They take a long time to build. They're probably, it's probably not worth it to rebuild them anymore. Do you got the scythes coming in for another uh, ground attack? Doing quite a bit of damage since there is actually quite a number of them. How can't really see if all that grouped up. There are oh, looks like we can see some warbirds and there's eight sides. <coughs> the beta player might need to get some cloud bursts to help deal with the air units. And something else to note: we also have the uh, proximity mine uh, upgrade. It tends to be more effective versus goo players than beater players, however, it can still be quite effective. Transfers a refinery, or finished building a refinery, I'm not so sure which, on unpowered uh, conduit wire. And of course it's facing this direction so you can't put the conduit wire here. And the refinery is going to be quickly focused down. But these uh, sites will have quite a bit of free time just to destroy this ground force. The beta player is losing an awful lot of ground for, you know, units due to the air force. In fact, he lost all of his aircraft also. Is he still going for more and more warbirds? I only see two out on the field now. Which two is not a big difference. Let's see, teleport away that refinery, because I don't think it actually got destroyed. Yeah, it's probably right here at the... It's down to 300 health. And the scythes come in and cleans up the rest of the ground units. These scythes have been very effective. We still do not see any AA. That is a huge problem. Because look, all these units are lost just because he doesn't have any AA here. But now, there are three cloud bursts. Which they can do a qu some damage to air, another set of three cloud bursts. Quite a bit of large factories, in fact. He's trying to make use of so I only have a, little, a few number of attachments. He is going to get commando shoot air units. And that's interesting. Commandos are qu they're cheap, they can be easily be replaceable, they're much better versus ground overall than cloud bursts. But they can still be, but they're very small, they can easily be splashed down by the scythes. And, well, those cloud bursts are very effective versus air units because he just got one. But here's the rest of the scythes coming in, they're going to eye to take out the cloud burst. They do get two, three, no, three. And some of the ground units also getting some units. He, a lot of these scythes are pretty heavily damaged. How many did he lose in total? He only has five now. He had eight, so he lost three in total. Something else to note, the beta player does have have sustained a higher economy over than the uh, human player by quite a bit, by additional, well, 13,000. 
additional 20%. So he has a uh, much better economy at the moment. He's building these additional conduit wires here just for the proximity mines. The proximity mines do like 20 dam 30 damage. And he's going, you can see that he just walked right onto them. The back units are pushing the front units forward. And he's actually losing quite a bit. These conduit water wire mines are doing quite a bit of damage. He still has a team of commandos here. He may want to put a cloud burst or two up there just to have more permanent AA and not be focused down. Do you got some hailstorms? Hailstorms are very good artillery. Be much better if he gets the move and shoot upgrade. And of course, he's running over the conduit wire. I don't think he realized that there's exploding conduit wire because he's losing a lot of unit. Ally under. Wait. I have an ally under attack? Why did it tell me that I had an ally under attack when I'm a observer? <laughs> That's interesting. And you can see this grid of conduit wire would just deny pretty much a lot of ground units. There is, what, 15 conduit wire? That's. Well, watch. Sent a lot of units to their. taking a lot of damage. And sides are now applying their damage. There's no more AA here. He lost all of his artillery. Actually, there is a cloud burst, but of course, these guys are over the high ground, so they don't actually see up there. Oh, we have warbirds. Actually, quite a bit of a squadron of warbirds. Not actually what they took out, and not so sure what was actually those missiles doing. But he does look like he has how many scythes? He does have six scythes, so he has rebuilt one. Another wave of warbirds coming out. Let's see what exactly they hit. As you can see, he transferred a lot of AA here. Just probably, perhaps, maybe he was hitting the pads. And the AA is actually doing quite a bit of damage, and the Scythes are getting much better engagement angles. The Warbirds, they were just dancing around and not actually firing. Well, the Scythes were firing, and the AA was firing. With all this uh, conduit wire mine, the uh, beater player is actually quite contained. And unable really to advance unless he gets some siege units. But he can't get siege units because there's too much uh, aircraft. There's not enough cover for them. He may want to invest... I'm not exactly sure. He needs more AA. He needs air-to-ground AA uh, upgrade. I think that's under artillery. It could be under the air upgrade. But he doesn't have the ground army he needs. Because <coughs> watch, this ground force, the artillery's it's sort of worthless to have the artillery. He needs more AA. And that AA is actually getting quite a bit of free damage. But it does fire the last shots into him. And we are going to see some aircraft repair pads to just make his aircraft just a bit more sustainable. Seeing they're actually getting repaired up in between uh, sorties. This like secret base, I guess. I'm not so sure what exactly to call that. Got cleaned up, but there's only one AA unit here. No, there's two. There's only two AA. This force would be shredded. Sure, commandos can fire their guns up the air, but they have to choose to shoot either at the ground targets or the air targets. The ground army was quickly destroyed by the beta player due to the large fact that he has a larger number of units, but these sides are just going to come in, focus the AA first, and then going to smash the artillery. Actually, the one there's only one AA there, and here we go. The, the artillery, all that artillery, now down. Air supremacy. Your partners just sell off the hangars. He needs more AA. There's no AA. Those sides have been way too effective. <clears throat> and
and these units are on a move order so they got they got destroyed though this force is still running around there it's actually this force actually severely damaged and there's still actually uh, two sides here they can probably finish off the rest of that group just fire off the rest of their missiles Got a big engagement here. The Gladys are moving forward. The Tridents are not exactly firing. We have Sipes here. Trying to... He's building these expansions. Quite... Everywhere. So... Oh, I just realized. The human player has lost a lot of expansion points. The, beautiful, the human player is a bit running low on economy. He has to rely on the center of catalyst field. But something to note that this is halfway used up, halfway used up. So in the long run, the beta player will be a much better sustain. Because he has more catalyst nodes. He has he can pump out more units. He can actually afford more losses. Which he has sustained much more losses. Seven sides. There's still five warbirds. I'm not exactly sure where the, all the warbirds are. There's the, these two here. There's one here, severely damaged. And human players trying to finally get to strike back. They're able to probably going to destroy this uh, small hub at least. Not exactly sure about the refinery. These units are fighting against the. F reinforcing units and this force is actually going to be cleaned up they're, they're completely surrounded going to get a bit of a drink just one moment just some bargs root beer So I'm still doing flying around, doing quite a bit of damage. Oh, another extractor gets hit. The human player is only down on to four refineries. Well, actually, a harvesting refineries. It was actually a really big problem for the human player because the beta player has a massive amount of economy in comparison. Just take a quick look on the resources. The beta player is now 17,000 credits ahead, almost 18,000. So yes, he has a lot of units. He's not been building enough AA, <coughs> but he has had a much better economy. He can sustain these additional losses quite easily, in fact. Quite a bit of combat wire here. He has not exactly cleaned that up. He's been trying to hit this refinery. Not exactly the easiest target to take down, but that large salvo took it down to half, almost less than half health. Sipes are probably trying to hunt the warbirds. Warbirds are just now taking off. They're not split up. Well, uh, they are split up. That's a good thing. So they don't get splashed down. But they could get splashed down here. Three warbirds. Four warbirds. Five. Six. Seven. And the eighth one gets away. That's a lot more warbirds down. Though he did lose a scythe or two. He. Let's see. Last time I remember he had seven sives. He still has seven sives, so he didn't lose any. Maybe lost one. He could add an eighth one, because we have seen him up to eight uh, sives before. He's now starting to clean up these conduit wires, which is a good idea. He's probably did a, a Q move. He queued up a lot of actions, well, basically attack orders on each individual conduit wire, so he's focusing fire them all down. Very nice. But he's now more focused on this large army here. Sides are destroying the AA first and now going to hit the artillery. There is actually quite a number of Gladys here, but there is a number of, of uh, howitzers here. And holy crap, that's a lot of artillery uh, fire coming down. Destroying almost all the Gladys there, not howitzers, uh, hailstorms. I've been playing a lot of company years too lately. Hailstorms, not howitzers. 
So, isn't a howitzer like a type of artillery? Pretty sure. Not exactly sure. Howitzer seems like a name, but might be a type of artillery. I think that's like stationary deploy gun, like a, basically one large uh, artillery piece that you deploy on the ground. It's not mobile, not even on. Just have like a couple wheels maybe for it to be pulled behind as like a trailer. Not exactly sure. If that's the case, these are definitely not howitzers. Now he's running into this conduit wire. He's going to take the damage. The damage is actually quite a bit, in fact. And he loses everything. The mines regenerate pretty yeah, decent at a decent rate, but they did regenerate when he after he started coming back. Looks like some sives. Oh, in fact, a lot of sives have been cleaned up. Five sives, or oh, at least four sives, went down. The artillery is trying to apply as much damage. These units are being funneled in. He needs to group them up and then attack. But there's actually a, quite a bit of beater force here. He needs to get the uh, sives loaded up and hit the artillery as soon as possible. There's, but now there's an adequate, an adequate amount of AA here. Hairstorm to be able to gain the shoot and fire, so we're going, we're going to see some shoot and move, or move and shooting artillery, and we're also going to see a predator uh, individual target shot. And this art, there's just a, a vast number of artillery pieces here. Even though the aircraft was severely effective, the sheer fact that the beer player has constantly been destroying extractors, denying that economy will win him the game. The superior economy is what he won the game. Not the good engagement, but the superior economy. Well, this game replay is pretty much over. Trash uh, loser has F plus, f oh, plus 40. He needs better economy management. I didn't, haven't really been paying attention, but plus 40 is pretty bad. <laughs> this is Lord Ajahn saying thank you for watching and signing off.